Copy or copying. Take three. Now, one thing I like to do right away is make sure that the firmware and the software is updated to the uh, most recent one. Now, the 40 series machines were manufactured between 2011 and 2012, but the firmware is available all the way up to 2015. Now, I made a note when I first received this machine, down here in the lower right hand corner, it gives you a copyright date. The copyright date tells you what the firmware is. And so in this case, this machine had 2013 firmware. So what I'm going to do, format the hard drive and then reinstall the updated firmware, which I have here on this USB uh, uh, jump drive. So if you don't have this, do not format the hard drive because you're going to have a hard time trying to find it. I just happen to have a friend that works for Toshiba and they gave it to me. Now if you, have, if you know anybody who is a certified Toshiba representative, you can get it from them. They may charge you for it, they may not, uh, I don't know. Um, it's not like it's super secret information or anything like that. What I'm going to do first off is I'm going to hold down 3 and C and then turn on the main breaker switch. I'm going to hold those until the lights light up Then I can release. This is going to take me into the service mode where I can format the hard drive. All right, you can see it's asking for a password. You actually don't need to, just hit OK. And then it's going to give you some options here. We want number three, format hard drive. It's going to ask you if you're sure. Yes, we're sure. And this is going to take a while. OK, now we can see that the format has been completed and they're asking us to restart the multifunctional printer. So what I'm going to do is just hit the main breaker to shut it off, and then I'm going to take my jump drive, insert it in the USB port on the side, and then while holding 4 and 9, I'm going to turn it back on and continue to hold those buttons again until the buttons light up. You can release at that point, and then we're going to wait for the next service mode. So once again, it's asking for a password. We can just hit OK. And then on the left hand side, you can see select firmware. Now you can do these individually or all at once. And it tells you which ones need to be uploaded or updated by the arrows next to the numbers. So in this case, I'm just going to hit start and it's going to take me through and update all three of those. Number one, number two and number four. And this will probably take five or ten minutes. Now at this point you can see that the format and the reinstallation of the updated firmware has completed successfully. And it tells you update successfully completed. Please restart the multifunction printer. Now again, I'm going to turn off the uh, breaker switch on the side. I'm going to remove the USB. Wait a few seconds and then I'm going to start the whole thing back up. Now this first boot may take a while, but as you can see down here, it says copyright 2015 Toshiba Corporation. That way we know that when our customers look, they know that they have the most up-to-date firmware possible for this machine. So even though the machine was built maybe five, six years ago, the, the software and the firmware is updated as of just about a year and a half ago. Okay, here it is, started up for the first time. It went through its auto calibration, it went through its self-check, everything came up good, which is a good thing. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is go to my user functions, go to admin, go to the password, and the default password is one, two, three, four, five, six. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the general and energy saver, because right now, since we updated the firmware, it's only set at one minute before it goes into energy saving mode. I'm gonna change that to 15, and then I'm gonna to go to the sleep and super sleep. That's also set to one. I wanna change that to 60 minutes on the sleep timer, and then I'll just leave the super sleep enabled. Okay, so now I can go through and I can run some test prints. I can change any other settings that I want. Now, if you're wondering how to set it back to factory defaults 
what you can do is go to the admin user functions. There's page one, page two, factory default. You hit that, you hit OK, and it's going to go through. It's going to take all the previous settings out. Now, the only thing that it doesn't take out is your network connection settings, okay? So that's good.